Welcome to the McKay Archives at Florida Southern College. In this video, you will learn how to successfully use finding aids to help in your research. The McKay Archives Center is open to the public and invites research in all of our materials. Visit our website at flsouthern.edu slash library slash archives to learn more about our collections and get started with your research. At first, using archival and manuscript collections in an archive can seem overwhelming or confusing. Knowing how to use a finding aid is a skill that is important when you are embarking on archival research. In this introduction, you will learn what a finding aid is, how it can help you with research and special collections, the most important components of a finding aid, and some helpful tips to keep in mind when using archival and manuscript collections. A finding aid describes and details the organization and contents of a collection. The words finding aids or finding guides incorporate the more narrow terms registers, inventories, and box lists. All of these items are tools created by archivists to help you navigate archival and manuscript collections. Reading finding aids, whether online or on paper, can help you identify collections relevant to your research and help you to discover specific folders of documents or photographs of interest within those collections. All finding aids share certain components, no matter what institution you are visiting. These components can include the title and date range of the collection, the collection overview, the historical or biographical note, which establishes context for a collection, the scope and content note, which describes what is or is not included in the collection, information on the arrangement of the collection, which describes how things are organized, such as alphabetically or chronologically, subject and index terms, administrative information, and a list of folders and box numbers within the collection. Next, let's look at each of these components in a bit more detail. The title and date range of the collection are provided at the beginning of the finding aid. Pay special attention to the specified date range. If you're looking for items from a particular century or era, you can tell whether the collection falls within this period by looking closely at the date range. After the title and date range, you will find a brief descriptive overview of the collection. This is a short summary of facts about the collection's creator, physical extent, arrangement, and other details, and may include a brief description or abstract of the collection. Scan the collection overview to get a concise view of vital information about the collection. Also note the physical size of the collection. Different institutions may use different units for measuring the extent of a collection. For example, linear feet, cubic feet, feet, boxes, or items. This number will give you an idea of how large or how small the collection is and how many boxes it contains. This is helpful when considering how much time it will take to complete your research. The historical or biographical note summarizes the background history of the individual, family, or organization who created the collection. You'll find notable eras, dates, and or events in the life of the organization or individual described in this section. This essential information places the collections in the context of its creation and is often necessary to understand the documents contained within the collection. The scope and content section of the finding aid contains a lot of useful information that can help you decide if a collection is relevant to your research. Here you'll find a detailed summary of the content of the collection, including subject or topical areas, events, and geographic locations noted in the records. Particular strengths or highlights of the collection, as well as any notable gaps, are discussed here. The scope and content note also lists the types of primary sources held within the collection, for example, photographs, correspondence, or meeting minutes. If the collection is arranged in different series, a detailed description of each series appears here. This can include subject coverage, date span, and arrangement of the materials within the series. The arrangement of the collection may be found within a scope and content note or in a section by itself. This information will tell you how the collection is intellectually organized. The organization can be as simple as alphabetical or chronological order. Often, however, it is a hierarchical structure of related series and subseries. Usually, the structure mirrors the original order that the collection was received in, so the user can see the context and use of the records as the creator did. 
Documents related to your topic may appear in only selected series and subseries. Save yourself time by paying close attention to the arrangement. The Administrative Information section provides details about any restrictions on access or use that the collection might have. This might include closure until a certain future date, limitations on fragile materials for preservation reasons, or conditions attached to publication and copying of the materials, usually expressed in a statement on copyright. Restrictions can be imposed by the institution or by the donor of the collection. Information about the provenance or ownership history of the collection can be in the Administrative Information section, as well as a list of related materials of note and a preferred form of citation for the collection. The final component of a finding aid is the box and folder list. This is an inventory of the contents of the collection, including the titles of each series and subseries and the titles of each folder found within each physical box of the collection. Once you've determined that a particular collection is relevant to your research, take some time to explore the box and folder list. This will help you identify materials you would like to request to view at the archives. Let's take a closer look at how to navigate the box and folder list. The box and folder list is just what it sounds like, a list of all of the boxes in a collection and the folders they contain. If the collection is arranged in different series, the box and folder list will include the titles of each series and subseries in the collection. The series title describes the relationship of all boxes and folders contained in the series or subseries. In this example, Music Scores is a subseries under the series Contests and Other Events, and Letters by Correspondent is a subseries under Correspondence. The folder title describes the nature of the documents contained within the folder. In this example, Bishop Tom, January to August, 1965, describes generally what can be found in folder one. There can be many documents within each folder. Though most archival and manuscript collections are processed at the folder level, occasionally you may find a collection processed at the item level, especially if the collection is very small. Reading the box and folder listing will give you a good idea of what the collection contains and which folders and boxes might hold items related to your topic. As you are browsing the box and folder list, keep track of interesting folder titles by noting the folder number and box number. You will need this information when you come to special collections to see the materials. When you find a folder title that sounds significant for your research or includes your keyword, also look at the titles around it. There may be similar folders nearby. Remember to think broadly about the topic you're researching as you scan the box and folder list. For example, if your topic is water use by Florida citrus growers, folders entitled water permitting or water power plants might also contain relevant documents for your project. Thanks for watching. And remember, your archivist is always ready to help if you have any questions about using finding aids or conducting research at the McKay Archives.